Hi everyone, and welcome to Peter's Reviews. Today we're out on the new uh, e-scoot Wayfarer bike. Uh, this is predominantly a town sort of city bike. So today we're going to take it round nearby where I live in one of the towns here. We will take on a couple of little trails just to see how it behaves. Uh, but predominantly we're going to see how it behaves and see if it's a good commuter bike, good fun bike, just a good bike to get out and keep fit. So let's go. During our uh, little run out today, we'll talk about some of the features on the bike. We'll talk about the power assist systems on it, uh, which range from one to five. Uh, we'll go through them and talk about how much power it's system is and where we need to apply it. Uh, we'll also look at how well the bike brakes. It, it does have disc brakes on it, but they're just the cable brakes and not the hydraulic brakes. So we'll go through some of the features as we work our way through our ride today. Apologies. Okay, so we start our ride out today. I'm actually in Power Assist 2 at the minute. Uh, just because we're on the flat and uh, just to see how it behaves. Power Assist 1's, you can feel that as well, but 2 is doing quite well here. So what we'll do next is we'll take it up to level 3 Power Assist, see if we can feel it. Yeah, it feels a lot lighter again. Let's move up to Power Assist 4. Oh wow, I felt that. Yeah, the bike wants to take off now. And last, let's go to five. Hey, a little bit again, yeah. But four was the one where I felt it really pick up. But five, it's doing really well. So yeah, pretty impressed with that. We're sitting at the 15 miles an hour now. I am pedaling, but I'm just, I'm just taking it easy, trail. but one thing to note when you first start off on this bike, eh, you do have to pedal maybe one, one and a half, two revolutions of the, of the crank before the power assist kicks in. I think with the, the Voyager, it, with the torque sensor, it sees it that little bit earlier and kicks in. It's not a problem, it's just something to be aware of, but the power does kick in well. Another feature that's quite nice about this bike, when you look down at the controller the, on the display, it tells you how much watts of power it's drawing. You know, if you're on the flat or if you're really going uphill and giving it some beans, it, it tells you what you're doing there. That's really helpful. Okay, we're heading for some trails just up the road here. So we'll give them a try. The tyres are reasonably chunky, but they are a lot thinner than the the Voyager ones, so more a city town tyre, hope you can hear me, but uh, let's give it a try, just take it easy, it's not too demanding down here, so it should be fine. Okay, so we're onto the trails now, but it's not looking too hot, a lot of ice, Just take it easy and see how we go. See if we can work a, a path through this. It's okay. Put it up into level four here, just to assist us. I know I am lazy. <laughs> I hear lots of people who go out and these scoot bikes are always in level one. And very rarely go up to four or five. But I like to try all the features. So let's give it a go. And we're really punishing this now because the track here is horrible. Come through some ice as you can hear cracking. Up this little hill. I'm not slipping about, but I'm not a going any sort of speed to take any risks either so yeah it looks okay yeah I'll certainly say if you're careful 
you're going to be fine on trails like this. Obviously, you've got to be a little bit aware you may end up with the odd puncture because they're not off-road tyres. But uh, they seem to be behaving quite well at the minute on this trail. Right, now we'll stop. Let's uh, look through some of the features on this uh, Wayfarer bike. So you can see tyres wise in the front here, you can see they're a little bit thinner, but they are, uh, they are, they, they do have a reasonable amount of grip on them. Like I say, more town city type, type tyres, but really good. On the front and rear, same tyres, and they, they also have the disc brakes, uh, which are on this side. Uh, they are the wire type ones, but so far they're responding really well, so no problems with them. They do have hydraulic front suspension, but I think it's just your standard spring suspension on this one. But it seems to be cutting out the bumps so far. And you see, it's more the step through frame, which I'm getting dirty already. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. The The Voyage is a great frame, but it is pretty high for me because I'm only sort of five, 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 six. So this is a, a lot easier to get on and off, that's for sure. Okay, further down the bike, you've got the metal pedals, which are holding my feet really well at the moment. And then obviously you've got your battery that sits in the centre frame and has a key at this side, this side to unlock. But just spin the bike round. The key to unlock's just here. Battery compartment's just here and your charging port's just here. All your cables coming down, run inside the frame here. Tucked away nicely. I've changed the seat because I do like a very padded seat here. So it is a different seat on it. On the rear here, you do have the, the rack carrier on the back. I've just got my lock on there at the minute. Uh, but yeah, you can get the panniers and stuff for the side here. Looks really good. On the back here, you've got your Shimano gear set and your Shimano gear changes on the top here. So you've got a seven set, a seven speed a Shimano gear set on this. A, on the front here, you have your display with all your settings for your speed, a, your battery level, a, you know, your power assist levels, and your, you know, your odometer to tell you how far you've travelled and that's resettable on each trip. And you've got your plus and minus keys to help you to decide what sort of power assist level you want to use depending on the conditions. On the front here you also have an on and off switch for your lights. So yeah, that's it there. And you yeah, also have a little horn as well, listen. Which I think will start on most people, but uh, we'll see how we go with that one. So yeah, on the, this side here you have a, a kickstand which is great for uh, standing the bike up. These uh, these e-bikes are always better on a stand especially with carrying a battery and everything on there. On the rear of the bike, it does have the rear light as well, which is controlled by the switch that controls the front light as well. I don't know if you'll see that very well in this light. If we spin the bike round to the front, you should also see the front light come on and off. So yeah, so there we go. Uh, as for the, the handlebars, I've adjusted mine on the stem slightly higher. Uh, I'm really enjoying that position. Uh, grips wise is good as well. On this bike, you have the choice to fit a, the throttle that they give you. Now, in this country, the, it's not legal to use them unless you, you're on private land, uh, things like that. So I've got it on there just for test purpose just now. So I'll let you know how that behaves when we give it a go when we're on, on these trails, maybe. Uh, to use that, you have to knock it down to power assist zero. So if I bring that down to zero and then just tilt it on the back wheel there, and you can see as I turn the throttle, the back wheel goes and it's showing it's at 14 miles per hour at the moment at that point so we'll just let that settle down and again you can just go have it on gradual I'll let that settle down so yeah it's a handy little thing it's more a fun quirky thing it's not something I think we would use the power assist levels on this bike are really good you will be surprised if you've driven the Pro the, the Pro has got a little bit on it but not an awful lot I really do enjoy the power coming from the back wheel you do feel it pushing you along. On my first ride out on this after I built it, I was like, is this better than the Pro? But after being out in it two or three times, it's, the Pro probably has it because it, it kicks in a little bit better, a little bit quicker, and it just maintains things a little bit better. Get back on the trails. Uh, we'll try it with the some gear changing, and we'll also try it with the, with the throttle, and then we'll take these for a run around town and see how it behaves there. Okay, let's go.
Okay, so that was just a quick round round the pond there, round the lake. So let's work our way back up to the village and then back through town and see where we end up from there. Head from home after that, I think. I thought it best to take on a busy road just to let you see how the bike behaves and how others behave, I suppose. I have added a little wing mirror to my right-hand side here, so I can see behind me, which I would really recommend if you're going to use this on any sort of any roads or, or commuting. So a little cheat I've found with this, once you're up to about 14, 15 mile an hour, if you pedal but just slightly lighter than actually turning the wheels, the the motor maintains that speed you're at. So I'm doing a gentle pedal, pedal with no push against the wheel, against the crank, if you like, and the bike's sitting at 15 miles per hour where I was. So again, that's me because I'm in fit, and you'll all be laughing again. But, you know, I thought I'd let you know. <laughs> right, okay, I'm back pedalling again. You can stop laughing. Okay, a couple of little things to be aware of, I think. Hey, commuting, out having a bit of fun, through towns, villages, cities, you're going to love it. If you have to go on the trails, on a dry day, it's going to be fine. On a day like I had today, I was probably pushing it to its limits through the ice puddles and a bit slippy in stages, but I wasn't on too long. And you know, these are these bikes are waterproof, but you've got to be careful to keep the controllers and the, the batteries dry. You don't want it absolutely covered if you can help it. Comfort wise, I've adjusted my a stem handlebar stem up higher so it's more it's, it's a little bit higher and it's a little bit closer to me because on my first ride out I felt it was just a little bit too far away and I was hunched over a little bit this way I think you can see it's a lot better Okay, we're just coming to the end of our ride here now. So, I've done about 13 miles. It's gone very well, really pleased with it. Great little commuting bike, great little fun bike if you want to get out there. It can handle the trails a little bit. Eh, I would say if it's something you were thinking about, eh, put it on your shortlist. I have been sent this bike by, by eScoot to review, but eh, my opinions are my own. And eh, yeah, I really enjoyed this little run out today and eh, we'll be making further videos using this bike in the future so I can tell you a little bit more as I get more experience using the bike so for now say thanks for tuning in again if you haven't already please say give us a like it really helps the channel and please subscribe if you're not already most of the people that watch my videos believe it or not haven't haven't subscribed so the more subscribers the better the channel will then be shared with more people that are interested within the e-bike community so please uh, 
like and subscribe like I ask. That's great. Uh, the channel's growing lovely thanks to all your support. So for now, I will say bye for now. And uh, thanks again for tuning in. Bye-bye now.